You're finally looking up to me. I, I've always looked up to you. <laughs> That's what I tell you, at least. Um, you better keep on keeping on with that. Yeah. So, <laughs> you're going to give me a tour of the um, internals of the Aurelia II uh, volumetric. We are. We are going to take, I'm um, going to go back to the 90s here, a magic Meow. school bus. Exactly. Ride. <laughs> All the way through an Aurelia II. <laughs> okay, so um, you, it was pretty easy for you to take the, to, to open up the machine, very right? Very simple. Okay. So the Aurelia 2, they've, they've made it very simple to get into it. Um, okay. We've been, it takes about three minutes, mm -hmm. truthfully. Uh, two screws take off the side panels. They come right out. Only thing you really got to pay attention to is these buggers here. Okay. Um, these are what run those lights that you saw, the ones that came on the um, steam arm lights and the oh, underneath okay. lights. So they're connected to make that happen. Okay. Um, disconnect that. It pulls right out. Down here, yeah. we had two screws that actually takes that whole front face off, mm -hmm. and there's two screws that go right here to take that out. Okay. That's the whole process. Cool. So, and quick. All right. So why don't you give me a little tour of, of all the components we have in here? So this, there's a beautiful rainbow back there. It's it is, it is quite <laughs> it's nice. It's pearlescent. It so is. that's my boiler, right? This, this is your boiler, yes. So okay. on any machine, you're going to have that gigantic boiler back there. Mm -hmm. um, you're, I believe it's an 11-liter boiler on this machine, okay. if I'm not mistaken. Um, that's your boiler. You see these big tubes that are coming out of it? Mm -hmm. This is what's called your heat exchangers. Okay. Okay. So they're actually transiting through they are. that full thing, through the boiler itself. They are, yes. Okay. So this is, this is your most important thing, right? I mean, this is what's keeping the machine hot. It's what's keeping your espresso hot. It's what where everything is going here. Okay. Um, there's a lot internally I cannot show you that's uh, yeah. going that's going through there. <laughs> okay. Um, but yes, and we will start kind of at the beginning and here in a second show you how water makes it all the way through. Okay. And then over here. Over here is a whole mess of electronics. Okay? Yeah. These are what's called solenoids. Actually, this is the solenoid. That's mm -hmm. your coil. Okay. Um, this is actually this whole system right here is actually just for your hot water. Mm -hmm. So what we have here, we have a solenoid. You can see water's coming through. Hot water would come up, mm -hmm. get stopped turns on, it would come through this way. There's another solenoid that's actually being held for cold water. So this oh, is how we mix. Okay. See this little valve right here? I can yeah. turn it one way or the other and make less or more cold water come through. Okay. Works just like a shower. So that's how we get 170 degrees versus coming out of here is going to be 240. Um, so water passes through here. This one mixes your cold water and mixes right through here and then right on up into and your hot water room. Just spig it down there. Yep. Okay. All that electronics just for hot water, just for cleaning basically. Okay. Um, you and can then what's my pump is down there. Your pump is down here. I can't quite get under there, but yes. Yeah, so this okay. is your motor. This All is right. your pump. Okay. Um, this whole left side is basically the, the electronic brain works of the whole machine. So oh, your, right. your computer, this is a volumetric unit. Mm -hmm. Your computer is inside here. It's got to be very well protected from mm -hmm. heat, water, and everything like that. Um, underneath here is actually the main power source. When the, when the power comes in, that's what distributes power to the entire machine. Okay. Uh, so again, very well protected. I didn't take it off because I don't want to yeah. get through all that. <laughs> We don't, okay. want to, we don't want to tell we, people to play Suffice to that. say, that's where the brain is. That's where your brain, that's where your electronics, that's how everything pushes through this machine. Okay. Up to the front of the machine, All right. we've got these gigantic blocks right here. These are group heads. Um, <clears throat> go ahead and touch it because we just turned it off. Touch it slightly. So, Ooh. See how hot that is? I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so this, <laughs> this is part of the really, it's gigantic, okay? Yeah. This is one of the reasons that it's a very stable machine because the circulation keeps this 200 degrees. So that's, so that's my, that's the sort of top of that whole group head and then yep. you're, you're really only seeing a little you're bitty part of this. it. All you're seeing is the part that goes right to there. Okay. But as we transfer that up, this is what it actually looks like. That's where that you're getting your uh, temperature stability and all that kind of stuff. Yep. We're trying to encase a little tiny tube of water and keep it as hot as possible because we're, I mean, that's. It seems a little overkill to me. You yeah, know what? A little tiny tube of water. If we, can, uh, if we can <laughs> keep it at 200, that's not overkill. <laughs> <laughs> on this side, you've heard you've heard this probably said a lot of times, especially in videos on this machine, but solenoid, group head solenoid, yeah. or three-way solenoid. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you actually take a look at it, and I probably, if I was doing this right, I would have taken one off for you already. Sorry. Yeah. Um, the This is what starts and stops your water from getting through. So beyond this point right here, there's constant water pressure. There okay. is just, there is water right there. What's going to happen out. is water's going to come in. When this turns on, it's going to open up that plunger that's inside of it. Okay. And it's going to allow water to then cycle to this side of the group head, which comes out down there through the bottom. Okay, okay. So that valve manages that process as soon as you 
it hit one of these buttons. Yep. As soon okay. as you hit one of those buttons, it chunk chunk. You hear that big clicking noise? Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. We're opening that plunger, and I'm allowing water from this side of the group head mm -hmm. to now enter this side of the group head where it's unrestricted except for espresso. I see. The three-way side of it is right here. So this little dispersion tube coming out. As we do that, you picture a plunger that's opening and closing. Yeah. It has to release that pressure somewhere because it can't push it back up into the system. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is going to then dispense out here. And it's going to travel all the way down into this little bugger, which is where it goes. Bye-bye. Oh, okay. It goes down into your drain. Yep. Has to spray it somewhere. Um, it's much better <laughs> in there than in your machine. I guess. <laughs> um, okay. And so, it, so is that the, those tubes are for both sides, yep. both groups? One group head, one group head. Okay. And it's, just, it's got a third just because they generically make it so that you could have a three group head machine. Got it. Okay. Um, that's all that's for. That That is right there, one of the common leak points that people have. I'll hear people calling all the time, my machine's leaking like crazy whenever I'm turning off my shop. Oh. Because this maybe got hot, maybe got cut. Okay. That falls down. Now all of a sudden we're spraying water to the top of the machine every time we turn our shot off. I see. And so that's where they're seeing that leak has come up over the machine. Yep. It'll okay. come. Oh, it'll actually just kind of drip down everywhere. Okay. But it's, it, it perplexes people. It's like, oh, it only happens when I turn my shots off. See, I see. Okay. <laughs> and so, and that happens on, on this machine, but on every machine you'll have that issue. Okay. Um, because it's, you know, if it's six years old, everything's going to have to get replaced eventually. What's that? All right, so this is a combination, and this Simonelli is one of the only ones that do this, but this is a combination anti-suction valve and safety valve. Okay. Um, if you start back here, actually, coming out of the boiler, yep. we have steam that's mm -hmm. through there. For safety reasons, we need to have what's called a safety valve. If there was a malfunction where your, your pressure stat just started running and just kept running and running and running, mm -hmm. um, the pressure is going to eventually have to go somewhere. So okay. without this safety valve, it would just explode the boiler. All right. So we have a safety valve right here. This one I think is set to 1.7, 1.8 bars. Mm -hmm. This is what's called an anti-suction valve. Now back up just a little. Sorry. Oh, okay. So, because we still got steam inside this boiler. This is to prevent any type of vacuums inside the boiler. Okay. So that is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. This right here is every year probably needs to get replaced. Okay. It's a small gasket and it works. It's one of the hardest working things inside this machine. And so, and preventing vacuums is important because if you have, if you have a vacuum in there, you're not going to be able to get to the proper temperature. You may not be able to get to temperature. You may um, actually inadvertently suck milk up okay. your steam arm while you're trying to while you're trying to uh, you know froth your milk steam yeah. your milk. Um, a boiler contamination is one of the nastiest things. Yeah, you can't. You've you got to just have. replace your boiler, right? Yep. Yeah. So typically, what you'll hear in cafes, or if you listen to your machine, you'll hear this. Hear that? Yeah. That little slight hiss. Just like that. Yeah. That is a common thing. I walk into a cafe, I'll hear it all the time, and I can tell them right off the bat. So you got a steam leak at your anti suction valve. Um, this little thing. Would right it be here, happening just all the time? Yeah, it's okay. going to have this just constant. Just a little bit. Okay. It's just like that noise. Your machine should sound like this. Nothing. <laughs> I'm is, glad I was quiet right yes. then. It shouldn't sound like cat cackling. It should not sound like cat cackling. <laughs> you have a severe problem if it sounds like cat cackling. <laughs> that means it's a great machine. <laughs> um, okay. If you hear any noise, mm -hmm. that is what's to get replaced. This is okay. an easy replacing, and it it affects everything. It overwork. If you have a leak, it means your machine's overworking. Every okay. piece of that machine's overworking. You are you are killing something else inside your machine for a very simple fix, mm -hmm. and it's a very noisy fix. You can hear it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, but yes, that's its sole function is to equalize the pressure inside of the boiler. Okay. And then what are all my little tubes and stuff down here? <laughs> <laughs> that's an easy answer, isn't it? <laughs> let's, let's start off actually in the beginning. So let's talk how water makes it through because that's okay. what the these tubes are. It's okay. how water gets in and through your machine. Cold water is right here. This is our going out. That's our main water source. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that water does, it comes up and it hits to the pump. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's now going to come through this pump and it can pass with it on or off basically, but we've got arrows. Water mm -hmm. comes in, water goes out. Now we're going to split this water a couple different ways as soon as it comes in. This one here, we ran it over. This is the cold water. So that's for that cold water solenoid, that mixing valve we talked about for up here. Yeah. So we split water up one way there. Mm -hmm. The other way right here is your gauge. So that's how when we read this little gauge, we know, oh, okay, I've Pumpers, got yeah. three bars. I've got nine bars. That okay. all runs through here. 
this brings me to another problem. A tiny little calcium leak. Look how small this line is. Yeah. One little tiny calcium leak. Oh, my gauge isn't working. Mm -hmm. Could just be that. Okay. okay. The next, and this is where we get important, is water out that way. So you can see that little tube runs all the way into this little block. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is now the how the water gets into the system for use. Okay. All right. Outside of the cold water. So this is where it's going to start its transit process. Yep. Okay. This is this little line here carries all the water for water in the boiler, water through your group heads, your heat exchangers, mm -hmm. um, and just any other type of water you know throughout the whole system. Okay. Okay. So now it comes up here. Don't worry about this way for now. We've got two different ways we can go here. One, it's always shut off. So this is what's called a manual fill. Mm -hmm. This allows me, and you'll hear when I turn it. Okay. Hear it? That allows water to just go into the system. I get to control it. When I were to, when I do that, you'll see this level start rising. Not quickly, so don't look at it because it'll take a while. <laughs> see it? It's barely rising. Okay. And, okay. and so is that when you first get the machine, that's, you're going to have to do that just to get it going the very first time? That's to get water inside of the boiler. Yes. Okay. So any time that we have a malfunction with what's called our inlet solenoid, mm -hmm. what we're getting to next, that's how we bypass that. That's how I we see. get water in directly into the boiler. Okay. Um, so the way your system works typically, normally for you, since you had an installer install it, mm -hmm. the water is going to come to this thing. This is what's called the inlet solenoid. Okay. Again, this is the same plunger design, okay? It holds back water. So right now, I have constant water right there. I have no water on this side of the solenoid. Mm -hmm. When your boiler gets low, gets low and it needs water, this turns on. Okay. Click. Just automatically senses, yeah, that moves, okay. So now if you follow my little thing here, mm -hmm. water, when that clicks on, water goes, whoop, goes through here, okay? Then it follows straight up into the bottom of the boiler. My little rainbow back there. Every little rainbow. That's okay. how we fill this boiler. Um, your machine all day long, as you're steaming, you're boiling off water, mm -hmm. water level drops, this kicks on. That's how it refills it. Okay. Okay? The second way it splits is this way. Now water, this is going to our group heads. So okay. if you remember, so this is a heat exchange machine. Mm -hmm. It does not have, the water you're coming out of the group head is not coming from your boiler. It's yeah. coming from your heat exchanger, mm -hmm. which runs through your boiler. Okay, so that water source is is a different water source. So it's coming out and then is it, yeah, then it's feeding the two separate yep. heat exchangers there, like back there? Yep, okay. so we're gonna take water right through what's called a flow meter. Mm -hmm. The flow meter is only on volumetric units. If you do not have a volumetric unit, you will not see a flow meter. Okay. Okay. These are flow meters. This is how we volumize the water, right? This is these count a revolution. So when I program it for two ounces, I'm not programming it for two ounces. I'm programming it, programming it for 272 spins of a flow meter. Okay. And then the, and and you're programming it. The brain is saying that, and then the brain is saying to these guys, do 272 rotations. Exactly. Okay. Don't quote me on that number. I know. <laughs> Let's say four million. Four okay. million. Um, so four then million. from there, your water is then going to go into your heat exchange, the bottom of the heat exchange. Mm -hmm. If this was a semi-automatic, it would just be connected. Okay. Okay, so you wouldn't have that anymore. So now water comes into the bottom of the heat exchange, and once again, it splits. Mm -hmm. We're going to split up into the heat exchange, which then comes out up here, the mm -hmm. part that I showed you earlier. So that's a tube. The other way it splits is up this tube. Yeah. Okay. Now this tube, tube, I can't quite get back there to kind of show it to you, but this tube is going to run up into the bottom of the group head. Okay. Okay. And then you have another tube that's running down. This and is, that, and, and, but is that, okay. So w w this is I, that's not, circulate. okay. So my water comes in down there, it goes through the tube and then it's circulating your, yep, this your, way. Your water goes through two ways basically. Okay. So it goes up into the heat exchange. Yeah. Which we feed this way. And then that goes to the group head. Yep. And then it comes in. Now, what I don't know, I'd ha I, I have to double check. I'm pretty sure the way this works is the flow rate's this way. Okay. So water flows this way, comes into the group head. Okay. Then it flows back out. To that little dude tube, that comes which then down. Comes down. And, and cycles. Back in. I see. Okay. So it's splitting. It's not splitting here, technically. It, no, it's not splitting here. It's getting, okay. it's getting fed back in here. I see. Okay. Okay. Got so it. So the you have to cycle the water. If we didn't cycle the water, it would sit inside this group head and basically just get stagnant. And be too hot. 
theoretically. Theoretically, actually, you might, you, you, you'd probably be too hot. You might actually even be too cold, depending mm -hmm. on if they could actually keep that water to rise up here. Yeah. Because your heat source is down here. So that thermo, that thermo siphoning, that kind of thing is really all about just the meat, the, the consistency of the temperature. Maintaining temperature. Okay, you're if always cycling. If you cycle cycling. too fast or too slow, it can change your temperatures. Okay. Um, now, and that's why you'll hear people say, oh, one burns too hot, one burns too cold. You know, it's, it's a, everybody has a different cycle rate. Every yeah. manufacturer does. Okay. They put a, millions of dollars into could figuring you, these out. <laughs> could you have a difference between group heads? In a brand like this, no. Okay. You can when there is a scale buildup. Okay. Okay. So if we if we have maybe a particular scale problem on just one heat exchange and we restrict that water more, mm -hmm. now all of a sudden I'm going to get a different temperature because I have a different flow rate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that can happen. Very typically though, it's rare to get a, a, calc a major calcium buildup in Only one, one yeah. and not the other. Okay. If that happens, it's because people have a two group machine and 95% of their shots are coming Is through, going through one. one machine, you know, okay. one group head. Cool. So when that happens, basically, again, so water comes up and it's just this, it's this very slow mm -hmm. cycling that's happening inside the heat exchange. Inside here, you always got to keep remember, this is a self-contained tube. You can actually see it mm -hmm. because it sticks out here and it sticks out here. That water that's in there never touches the water inside of your boiler. Yeah. Never. Okay. Never the twain shall meet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where that's from. <laughs> um, Anytime you can use nair, you have to, right? I guess. Um, okay, so it really is that you know. You, so that is the difference between your steam and your and your and shot your, water. Yep, and your okay. shot water. And that's why up, up in here we're at 240 degrees. In here we're at 199, mm -hmm. 200 degrees okay. because we're cycling that water. Um, so that's the whole process of how water makes it through here. So when you hit your button, mm -hmm. you see everything come out. That's what just happened. Water, whoop, 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 around your flow meters, through here, out here, yeah, through your group head, through your three-way solenoid, and then out your port filter. And then um, the other two tubes we have coming off the top, obviously, are, are sort of taking the steam for your steam wands, right? So you've yep. got your input down, your water intake in the bottom, and then your steam off the top. Yep. So this is connected directly to the internal of the boiler. Yeah. Steam comes straight up. Right through here, up to here. Oh, I'm almost out of steam. Yeah, <laughs> it's just water right now. <laughs> Hot water wand. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we push that steam directly out through here. And okay. that is directly, it's just one easy, easy line going through. Cool. Um, the piece that people don't know what is, this is very important because okay. this is probably one of the number one maintenance issues. Mm -hmm. This is what's called a pressure step. Okay. Okay. You can see all these electrical wires coming in. Mm -hmm. This is how water gets transferred. If you can make it to this side. So I your heating can't elements. really, but. Oh, no. Meow. Your heating elements over here. Okay. Okay. So this, you can see there's a copper tube right here. Yeah. That copper tube, which you can't see over here, runs into the side of the boiler. That okay. is another pressure gauge. So we set this to turn on or off at certain pressures. So when you see that 1.3 bars, I can set this to maybe turn on off at 1.4 bars, okay. maybe off at 1.1. Mm -hmm. So when this is on or off, mm -hmm. this is how your machine heats up. When this thing says, oh no, I'm at 0.9 bars, yeah. I turn on. I, I transfer heat or I transfer power to the heating element, okay. which then reboils the water. And so now we get hotter, hotter, hotter. You'll hear a clicking noise all the mm -hmm. time. That's what that is. That's this clicks off. Okay. So where this becomes an issue, and it goes back to where we were talking about the anti-suction valve, is that if this thing's turning on, off, on, off all day long, mm -hmm. it has a it, it has a point that it has to stop working. Mm -hmm. When that goes down, your entire machine goes down. That's when you have. That's when you walk in. You've got no steam in your boiler. You open up your steam arm. I've got nothing. Okay. That's because your pressure stat went bad. And so it's just you got to replace that, and you're then you're it. good to go. Yep. Is it is it easy to do? Um. Yeah. It's 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 not too bad to do. It's okay. it's nothing I would recommend. You know, individual users probably doing because you'd want to understand what you're doing here. Yeah, but it's not like um, a difficult part to get or anything nope. like that. Like it's a pretty routine thing, so yep. it's you know it's not like the end of the world or you need to get Every a new machine. Every technician stocks about seven of these. Okay. <laughs> Very easy to do. It takes you know. 30 minutes to actually replace it's okay. not hard at all um that is this is what keeps your machine working though um mm -hmm. and this is the most worked part probably inside of your entire machine because okay. all day long it's going on, on off, off, on, yeah. off cool all right anything else you want to cover before we uh put this baby back together i believe we caught everything we sure inside did. of this, this was a machine. very very thorough tour, uh, 
tour. Um, cool. All right. So that is our internal tour of the uh, Nuova Simonelli Aurelia 2. Now you will go back to normal size for me. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. Thanks, Kat.